Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. famous author, O. Henry, wrote this story about a young couple named Jill and Della. Jim and Della, excuse me. The couple was very poor but very much in love. As Christmas approached, Della wanted to buy her husband something special. She wanted to buy him a fancy watch chain for his gold pocket watch, but she didn't have enough money. Then she got an idea. She had long, beautiful golden hair. So Della decided to cut her hair short and sell it to buy the chain for Jim's watch. On Christmas Eve, she hurried home carrying a brightly wrapped box in the watch chain which she had purchased by selling her hair. Suddenly, Della began to worry. She knew how Jim admired her long hair and she wondered if he'd be disappointed that she cut it so short and sold it. Della climbed the final flight of stairs leading to their tiny apartment. She unlocked the door, and to her surprise, she found Jim home and waiting for her. In his hand was a neatly wrapped box containing his Christmas gift for her. When Della removed the scarf and Jim saw her short hair, t- tears began to well up in his eyes, but he said nothing. He choked back the tears and gave Della the gift box. When Della opened it, she found a beautiful set of silver combs for her long hair. When Della asked how he could afford such an expensive gift, she learned that he pawned his only possession of value, his gold pocket watch, to buy them for her. The point of O. Henry's story is that far more beautiful than the gifts themselves is the sacrifice of love that they symbolize. My children, I am not with you much longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Such as my love has been for you, so must your love be for each other. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, for your love for one another. That is the passage of scripture that Jesus is most famous for. It is the statement of Jesus that is the most quoted. I give you a new commandment. Love one another, such as my love has been for you. And yet, it is the passage of scripture that people follow the least. Why is that? If you ask Joe Catholic, do you believe in love, I would wager to guess that most people would say yes. But is that the love that Jesus is speaking of? Jesus is talking about a very specific kind of love in this passage. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And how did Jesus love us? To death, to the cross. Jesus is speaking of sacrificial love. Jesus is speaking about loving until it hurts. Many these days don't love sacrificially. We love casually. We love with limits. We love with conditions. We love as long as we're getting something out of it. Unfortunately, that kind of love doesn't get us very far. It is casual love that has been responsible for abortion being so widespread in this country for so long. I'll love when I'm ready to love and not before. I'll love when it's convenient to love and not before. People have been shocked and concerned over the numbers of children that have been committing crimes of unspeakable violence against their classmates. And many blame guns. Personally, I don't agree with that. Guns have been part of our country's history since before it was a country. School shootings have only been occurring in the past 20 years. I actually blame abortion for the school shootings. Now follow me on this. What is the abortion rationale? This life, because even the most die-hard abortion advocate will now concede that the fetus is alive, 
this life is causing me a problem or an inconvenience. Therefore, if I eliminate the life, I eliminate the problem. These kids have grown up with that mentality. They have never known a world that has not known abortion. And they've had this mentality ingrained into them as early as grade school. Isn't this the same logic they're using to justify their violent actions against each other? These kids were picking on me, so I killed them. They were mean to me, so I shot them. Their lives inconvenienced me in some way, so I ended the lives and thus ended the inconvenience. That is what happens when we substitute sacrificial love for conditional love. Our society doesn't understand sacrificial love anymore. If we were to read through the Old Testament, you always find passages that describe the sacrificing of animals. In fact, there's one passage in the book of Samuel when David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant from Hebron to Jerusalem, about 54 miles. And the passage says that every six steps, David sacrificed a bull, a ram, and a goat. Every six steps. Messy, to say the least. Expensive, to say the most. These people lived in an agricultural community. Livestock was capital. Livestock was money. That's like saying if we carried the tabernacle from here to Westerly, about the same distance, and every six steps burned a $100 bill, a $50 bill, and a $20 bill. An expensive walk. We don't live in an agricultural society. We live in a capitalist society. Wealth is determined by dollars and cents. All of these old beautiful churches that we have in the diocese were built on sacrificial love. This church, Precious Blood in Woonsocket, St. Matthew's in Central Falls, all of these big magnificent churches were built on egg money and milk money and bread money. They were built on foundations of sacrificial love by poor people with lots of faith. Now many of these old churches in the diocese are closing. We've experienced this ourselves at St. Leo. Why are they closing? Reason number one, there aren't enough priests. Young men aren't joining the seminary. Why? Because they don't want to commit to a life of service for the people of God. What is that but a lack of sacrificial love? Reason number two, people aren't coming to church anymore. They come up with a variety of excuses why they can't come to church, and I've heard all of them and all the excuses are lame. The bottom line is this, is that out of 168 hours a week that God gives them, they can't give one hour back to God to thank him. Period. End of story. Lack of sacrificial love. Reason number three. Out of the people who do come to church, some of them don't give sacrificially to their parish. They still think a dollar a week is an adequate gift, despite the fact that we publish what we need in the bulletin. We summarize the financial report every fall and plainly state that you can't run a parish on $52 a year. We don't require tithing for membership in the Catholic Church like many other denominations do. But we do ask that what you give to the parish and to the poor be a sacrifice. Because that's how we become like Christ. Our love for him should reflect our love for others. We become like Christ by constantly giving ourselves in sacrifice for one another. All of the problems in the world, all of the problems in the church, all of the problems in our country, and all of the problems in our parish come down to this. We suffer from a shortage of sacrificial love. The sooner that changes, the sooner things get better. Ask yourselves today, yes, I know how to love, but is my love sacrificial? Do I truly strive to love like him? And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.